Your Eminence, after completing your studies in philosophy and receiving a bachelor's degree from St. Charles Seminary in Philadelphia in 1952, Bishop George Leach of Harrisburg, your home diocese, sent you to the North American College in Rome for four years of theological studies. You were, you were ordained on July 17, 1955, and you completed your licentiate in theology the following spring in 1956. But you only spent two years in the Diocese of Harrisburg as an assistant pastor of Good Counsel Parish in Marysville and as secretary to the Diocesan Tribunal before Bishop Leach asked you to return to Rome for a doctorate in canon law at the Pontifical Gregorian University. That would have been in the fall of 1958. Where were you on October 28th that fall, 1958, when Cardinal Angelo Roncalli was elected Pope John the 23rd? I was in the square at St. Peter's. We had uh, actually, Pope Pius XII died the day that I was in uh, Lourdes in France and was flying off to Rome, we got word that the Pope had died and uh, therefore were wondering what going to happen to the church. And the, the uh, excitement of the crowds um, in St. Peter's Square was such that we uh, were able to walk there from our casas, uh, casa in the um, oh, casa Santa Maria, Casa Santa Maria, Casa Santa Maria, to um, Square and St. Peter's, and uh, it was a wonderful experience. Did you recognize the name right away? No. From Cotley? No. He wasn't one of the front runners. Do you recall any thoughts of your own or from others why he was elected and how beneficial a pope he would be? No. I don't have any recollection of that. But I do know that uh, he quickly made his mark. How was that? He would go on walks uh, through the city, and uh, in the, the course of these walks, he uh, would say things that indicated that he a breath of fresh air for the Roman Curia. So these trips that the Pope uh, Pope John took, he would leave Rome often with his chauffeur and leave and just show up anywhere or he would take these walks. Well, the, uh, he didn't go on many, but he, he did go around the city and then he went to Loreto in uh, Italy. Mm -hmm. um, that was a shrine that was very well known and I think he went to Assisi, too. But these unannounced walks and unannounced uh, car trips around the city, and he'd show up someplace and, That's right. and say hello? Uh, I recall uh, one uh, event that was special. Um, it was the feast. It was around this time of year, and it was the feast of I think of St. Ambrose, which is right now. And I said to the bishop, let's go to the church of Ambrose because the pope is likely to come there. And sure enough, he showed up <laughs> and he made a talk. Well, did you or you, you or your friends or associates in Rome at this time in late autumn 58 have any idea that this Pope John would do something as extraordinary as call a council? No, we didn't. 
Uh, that, that absolutely was uh, foreign to our thinking. But I did hear later on from Cardinal Ottaviani that the cardinals had discussed the calling of a council at uh, in, in their meetings and uh, that there was agreement that whoever was elected pope would call a card, uh, council. Well, he did so on January 25th, 1959. Pope John the 23rd On October 25th, 1959, Pope John the 23rd informed the Clinrome who had attended the closing of the church unity octave at the Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls that he had the intention of calling a universal council of the church. I do recall the church unity octave as we called it in those days in the late 1950s. It was said from the feast of the chair of St. Peter on January 18th to the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul on January 25th. I remember my parents participating in a program called Operation Understanding where we lived in Oklahoma City and they would visit their neighbors during that time to introduce themselves and information on the Catholic Church. What were your memories of the Church Unity Octave as it was celebrated in Pennsylvania? I. Uh have a recollection of the church unity octave and it's not a very clear recollection. We did celebrate it but uh, it's it picked up a lot of uh, force since the council. That's right it went through an ecumenical more ecumenical change. Yes. It was unusual for the Pope to attend that closing at St. Paul's in those days and when he invited the cardinals around Rome many were very surprised that he was going. Those that didn't go were even more surprised <laughs> <laughs> yes. because they did not hear the announcement in yeah. the sacristy. I believe the only one who knew for certain was Cardinal Tardini, Domenico Tardini, the Vatican Secretary of State. With uh, from whom I brought a special chalice home to Bishop Leach, which I still use, and which is here in the sacristy. Cardinal Tardini did not live very long after that announcement. I believe by 1961 he had passed away, so that, okay. was, that was very, it had to be right about that time. Uh, well, it was uh, 58 or 59 when I uh, uh, home from Rome and brought with me the chalice that Bishop Leach used every day at uh, his liturgy. But we had a different chalice for the, um, during the council. So it was on January 25th, 1959, that Pope John told the cardinals he was going to call a council, among other things. When did you first learn of the Pope's intention to call a council? Probably within a few days because the, uh, I think, the uh, secret was out once the speech was printed in L'Osservatore de Romano. That's right. It was, it was out, the secret was out, even though he, he only made the announcement in the, uh, in the sack, but it was, the word was out very quickly. Now, what were your thoughts when you first heard this? Because the previous council, Vatican I, closed in 1870, a little prematurely because of Garibaldi's forces mm -hmm. taking Rome. And the council before that was Trent, which was 16th century. So these were not often in the history of the church at that time. What were your thoughts? Well, I don't think I had any thought. Um, the other things that he proposed, uh, a reform of the Code of Canon Law. And, and a calling a synod for the Church of Rome, and a, Diocese a of Rome. a synod for the Church and the Diocese of Rome were not major things. Um, well, I, in fact, I thought that the 
reform of the Code of Canon Law was the, the major thing of the... Well, you would have as a doctoral student of canon yes, law. Yes. That was your immediate interest. So mm -hmm. the, and that did, it took a little bit longer than the Council for the Code to be mm -hmm. reformed.